Subha Rao, Professor Emeritus at VITS Delhi. Professor Dr. Subha Rao, presently working as Professor Emeritus, VITS Delhi, started his career as teacher of law in 1978. He's considered as a good teacher, able academician, and efficient administrator, the support for which is drawn from his academic and professional background. Professor Rao made marked contributions in rationalizing and strengthening the administrative reform and systems in the universities in which he worked. He has been instrumental in facilitating the university's access to funds under the various schemes of the UGC and from many such agencies. He held many academic, administrative, and supervisory roles in the university system. Among the many, few are acted as a visiting professor, director, research and development council chairperson, postgraduate council, National Law School of India University, Bangalore, former chairperson, undergraduate council, NLSIU, and acted as coordinator for the test conducted for recruitment on behalf of Competition Commission on India, in India. Trained in reputed institutions in the country, Professor Rao has specialized knowledge in constitutional law, international law, human rights law, family law, ancient Indian law, and law relating to cybercrime. Two key areas of women and law and research methodology continue to be his areas of interest. Professor Rao is known for his contribution to the development of curriculum in law in the capacity of chairman and member of board of studies in various universities across the country. We cordially invite you, sir, to address the participants today. Thank you. Am I audible and visible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Sound is okay? Yes, sir. Respected Professor Subramanya, the anchor, she did not give her name. Sir, Rishmi, sir. She has introduced me. Thank you very much at the outset. Subramanya always gives me a topic which I cannot cover within one hour. Today also he has given me a topic, not simply doctrinal or empirical methods. He has added some tag to it. Relevance of doctrinal and empirical methods in legal research. That is the topic given to me. Okay. This topic requires a discussion, at least with regard to seven parameters. We will have to give some introduction to the topic and we will have to refresh our memory, recapitulate the definition of research and definition of legal research. While doing so, we may have to have at least a glimpse of thinking process, which is essential. Then we will go to types of research. There are various kinds of research and this classification is always artificial classification and they are overlapping that we know. And then we will have to discuss about what is a doctrinal research and then what are its limitations with specific reference to legal research. After discussion over doctrinal research, we will have to discuss about empirical research, a very, very important, widely used and misused expression, and its relevance to legal research we will have to discuss. And ultimately, it is for you, my friends, to conclude that is not within my province. After hearing these points, which I place before you, 
it is for you to conclude on doctrinal and empirical research methods. My dear friends, sincere law person, I am deliberately using the expression law person, involves himself in legal research every day. It is not an exaggeration. He may be an advocate. He may be a legal executive. Or he may be a teacher. Or he is a judge. Or even a student. Even a common person having an inclination to know the legal implications. He will involve himself a sort of legal research every day. It is different from other disciplines, my dear friends. Other discipline aspects, if you see, those scholars in other fields, they do not agree that law has legal research in it. They say that we do not have system. So, systematic approach is not there. So their research is no research at all. That is the prevailing opinion everywhere, especially when you discuss about hypothesis, you will come to know about it. However, I say, when compared to other disciplines, the discipline of, discipline of law, if you take, every person conducts research every day. Legal research involves studying first legal problems. These are all imposed or brought. This legal problem will lead you to collecting legal information relating to that problem and when you are bringing in legal information, you are supposed to know what law is in that precedence, custom or usage in that particular field. Others need not bother about customs or usages, but when you are reading Hindu Marriage Act, Section 7, the marriage shall be solemnized in accordance with the customary rites and ceremonies of either party to the marriage when you say, you are supposed to read that one also in order to establish whether bigamy is rather committed or not. So custom and usage also you will have to collect. And then international parameters you will have to take. All these things have to be collected. And then they should be analyzed. If there are any gaps, you will have to suggest the action to be taken. So it involves several things when compared to other disciplines. Our task is rather very tough, my dear friends. You will have to filter the relevant facts of the case. Understand the case. Identify the problem. And they say that tentative generalizations, hypotheses cannot be made. Every advocate makes tentative generalization in the courtroom. Whether it is proved or disproved, you will know only when judgment is given by the judge. So my dear friends, legal research has its own peculiarities. Presentation of facts, identification of the problem, collection of the source material, analysis, and finding the solution. These stages are irreversible and necessarily will be there in every legal research. My dear friends, after giving that short importance about legal research, I will take one or two minutes to recapitulate your memory as to what is research. All progress, my dear friends, 
This is not my statement. It is a statement made by Hudson. All progress is born of inquiry. Not inquiry, railway inquiry is not like that. All progress is born of inquiry. Doubt is often better than overconfidence. Ignorance of, rather ignorance is bliss is not applicable here. Doubt is often better than overconfidence because it leads to inquiry. Inquiry leads to invention. Research is to see what everybody else has seen. Everybody else will be noticing several things. Research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody has thought. How it is? Think of apple falling on the head of Newton. Apples must have fallen on the heads of several persons. Nobody is bothered about it. Even Newton must have experienced that falling of apple on his head several times, but he did not entertain yes, a, a wonderful idea. He started thinking, inquiry, and found ultimately gravitational pulls. Even though that is an in, <laughs> imported doctrine, doctrine of basic structure, why till 1973, nobody has applied it. It was discussed in I.C. Gorakhanath case. It was referred once even in Sajjan Singh's case. It was referred by a socialist leader. The court started thinking differently. What nobody else has thought like that. Transformative constitutionalism. It was a contribution of a scholar, not in a judgment of foreign countries. In America, it is living constitutionalism. Instead of importing it, they have taken this transformative constitutionalism for the purpose of liberally interpreting the fundamental rights. And you can see indirect indirect discrimination, left hand Colonel Natasha's case, Justice D.Y. Chandra Chud had given the example of Fox and leather Stark, Fox and Stark example story, which we read during our childhood. So the purpose of the research are Differing thinking differently than others is for the purpose of attaining knowledge. Jnanam. It is not mere information, my dear, my dear friends. Jnanam comes out of constructive viewing of the things. Jnanam samyak vikshanam. Information leads to knowledge, and knowledge with wisdom is power. Mere knowledge is not power, my dear friends. You may become Hitler. Knowledge with wisdom is power. Etymologically, research, if you want to analyze the term, to search or to go around in circle, the French word, the French word research means thorough intellectual or academic questions. Okay. However, my dear friends, I would like to give only one definition. In the class, when we discuss about research, we will give half a dozen definitions, which are wholly unnecessary. We will give very old definition that is there. In Encyclopedia Britannica, 1911. Research means the act of searching into a matter closely and carefully. That is the first ingredient. Closely and carefully. 
inquiry second one directed to the discovery of truth it is a discovery of truth my dear friends and in particular this is important trained scientific investigation people say you will not fit into that whether we will see whether we will fit into it or not through our discussion in particular training rather trained scientific investigation of the people and facts of any subject they did not say only pure sciences or they did not say only education or sociology or psychology like that they said any subject based on original and first hand study of authorities or experiment remember this definition note down these ingredients for our discussion it is very important when you are telling discovery of truth what you should understand is that truth is a is an eternal value you were discussing about ethics just now truth is an eternal value value morals and ethics they overlap they are concentric circles overlapping with each other and that is a different discussion altogether truth is an eternal value and it is a scientific value with also my dear friends scientific method also is a value of any research brahmam satyam we said but truth is one ekam satyam the learned people depict it differently ekam satyam vipra bahuda vidyayate they will depict it differently same thing if you want to describe elephant if it is given to a blind person each one will give its own its own description everybody may be correct but ultimately only one thing is correct brahmam satyam ekam satyam vipra bahuda vidayate leave it we have forget about all those things background material we are bound to develop scientific temper under our fundamental law of the country fundamental duties are there look at article 51a sub clause h it provides that one has to develop scientific temper humanism and spirit of inquiry and reform it is a constitutional value my dear friends and when you have this in mind think about the definition of legal research what would be the legal research definitely we may say the aim of legal research is to attain legal knowledge as if there are illegal knowledge is also legal research is a systematic pursuit so it will suit to the definition systematic pursuit to find and ascertain applicable legal principles on a specified problem is there any problem with regard to the definition legal research is a systematic pursuit to find and ascertain applicable legal principles on a specified problems how how why our people do not tell this definition in the classroom it is an inquiry legal research is an inquiry it is an investigation made by law persons in the quest to find the solutions for the legal problems one thing which we should remember it cannot be in isolation law and society they interact with each other 
law operates in the complex society. It changes in accordance with the consensus of the society. It generates change. It is dynamic. Rational changes in the society are brought in accordance with the thinking of future needs. It will find solutions to the maladies. Thus, it requires constant change and modifications and preparedness over all. And that is why law is always in flux. In such a situation, it is difficult to rather make a systematic research, my dear friends. When compared to other disciplines, they are almost static for quite some time at least. But of course, in scientific research, we may say that what they are doing today may not be wholly applicable tomorrow. We will come to that later on when we discuss about empirical study. What they say is that it is applicable only to scientific studies. What it is, we will discuss. And then, my friend Ishwar Bhatt will tell you about when you are attempting at a research activity, you must have reflective thinking. There are two things. Routine thinking activity is there. And reflective thinking activity is there. Normally, what we do in our life repeatedly becomes our habit. We don't require special thinking for that. Automatically, we act in accordance with that. Routine thinking. For example, when rain comes, even an animal, even a rat will go into the hole. Routine. Unlike that, what is required is reflective thinking. On an issue, you contemplate and think and think over. We need research in such things. It is called Chintana Prakriya or Vichara. Inquisitiveness. Quest for knowledge starts. If you see Bhagavad Gita, the process, whole process of inquisitiveness you will be able to find. Now Vishada started. First chapter is Vishada Yoga. Arjun did not ask Lord Krishna permission to renounce the arms. He himself did it. Nakanche Vijayan Krishna Natarajam Sukhanicha, he said and renounced. And Krishna started teasing him. Then Vichara started. From Vishada, when you have a problem, then inquisitiveness, inquiry starts. And then he himself consulted the expert in the field. As we consult experienced people in the field, when you review the literature, we come to know about these things. And ultimately, several paths were shown to reach ultimate truth is one. Legal profession, if you take anybody starting from a lawyer in a mafuzel court to the stage of attorney general, it starts with vichara. Quest for knowledge will start like that. My dear friends, these are all not our inventions. D-U-E. U-E, it is called. D-U-E is considered to be the originator. And then the examples which I was telling of routine thinking and all these things were also from him. My dear friends, simply also you can say, describe, analyze, and evaluate. Describe, analyze, and evaluate. How do you do, do that? Very simply, you need not rather bother about this. 
how do you describe a particular thing series of interrogatives you can put what it is you will get some information when it has happened who is involved where it has happened if you put these questions you will get description <laughs> and then if you start questioning why it has happened how it has happened i'm i'm doing it automatically analysis will come then you start evaluation recording in progress how it is what if so what what next so all these things my dear friends come out of your interrogatives put questions automatically you will get very easy steps are there for everything my dear friends even with regard to research design paul in the young gives seven steps if you answer those things you get your research design and then as i have told you truth may not be always ultimate truth truth is a station one station there are series of other stations ultimately to go to the last station ultimate truth that is why even isaac newton has stated i am a curious chain with scattering steps on vast series of knowledge i am just filling my little pockets with collecting pebbles here and there from ocean of knowledge even thomas gray has said dark unfathomed areas in the oceans bear the genes of knowledge unless you reach ultimate truth you cannot say it is a perfect truth for example dalton has stated atom cannot be divided atom is indivisible he said is it divisible or not now neutrons electrons protons and whatever it may be and you can blast atom and destroy the human beings under the sky that is why it is always stated have full knowledge drink deep taste, taste not the opinions little knowledge is always dangerous these are the words of alexander pope my dear friends now we will come to third stage times of research charities char charities of your program has asked me only about two things they are everything is overlapping but i will give you list of kinds of research doctrinal and empirical research this is that what is we are what we are going to disc discuss descriptive and analytical research when you are telling about doctrinal research want you do incidentally descriptive and analytical research that i will come later on fundamental and applied research qualitative and quantitative research field research and laboratory research historical research diagnostic research my dear friends this list is not exhaustive in your thesis our friends your seniors must have submitted they would say what is the nature of your thesis definitely they would say doctrinal descriptive analytical fundamental qualitative research over all the names they would have given there is slight difference between these two and how they work let us discuss the first one doctrinal research not everything is doctrinal research my dear friends other things may be incidental but doctrinal research is related to developing 
the new are modifying or testing the existing existing concepts abstract ideas or theories then only you are developing a doctrinal study my dear friends so doctrinal research is related to developing the new or modifying the existing existing or testing the existing concepts abstract ideas and theories if there are no abstract ideas theories or concepts which you are presenting different from the pre existing one how can you call it as a doctrinal research everybody claims i am doing doctrinal research this is the definition will you fit into it or not is the question the word doctrina in latin means education knowledge and learning my dear friends i tell you strong doctrinal analysis will be starting point for legal research is it not or is it correct or not in legal research you start with doctrinal analysis only doctrinal methodology can encompass any form you go for pure legal analysis you refer to history of law you are bothered about jurisprudence ancient law you are bothered about what the law that existed previously what is the law now and there there are indications as to how the law might be evolving or developing only those things you present with concepts abstract ideas and a theoretical form doctrinal research as i have told you my dear friends is often associated with positivist legal research is there any thing you are doing about impact the answer is no positivist legal research always is bothered about what law is what it says this is the law my dear brother your honor this is the law your honor will present that's all right rather than examining the morality or effectiveness of the law morality and effectiveness we are discussing with the transformative constitutionalism constitutional morality and then we have seen other doctrines as well in general what we are bothered about positivist legal research and that is part of a part of legal research so doctrine method is the starting point for us but lot of legal research is not confined only to doctrinal approach how it is we'll see is it sufficient only to say what law is reading the section or interpretation of it which is known as black letter law it includes rather saying the provisions giving the, the rather cases it is a typical legal research my dear friends but sometimes it requires more than that no attempt to look into the effect or impact will be done with regard to this that is why we call it as primarily library based research now we are saying it is internet based we don't go to library or library books are not necessary for our students now whether it is good or bad whether they are correctly presented or not we are mostly bothered about internet so doctrinal research is primarily 
library based the doctoral research is also searching for legal doctrines we are bothered about legal doctrines as well so once you are referring to legal doctrines doctrine of eminent domain doctrine of eclipse doctrine of so and so like that you are bothered about legal doctrines what you are doing is normative research so in this doctoral research you will find a branching out to normative research or theoretical research when you are going for this type of already existing things where is the chance for formulating cause and effect cause and effect means hypothesis hypothesis is a tentative generalization the veracity of which may be proved or disproved based upon causal relationship why is equal to fx why should you go for that but it is not always correct my dear friend we will show or even in doctrinal study cause and effect model how we can bring out and then doctrinal methodology is often criticized saying that it is disconnected with reality but most of the researches you take any research it starts with the doctrinal research my dear friends another thing which you will have to note is that it is not independent we have noted doctrinal research includes normative research or theoretical research as well descriptive research as well you start your doctrinal research with the description of certain things descriptive research and then after presenting what is law you are going to analyze it is it not analytical research so it has no independent approach when you say doctrinal approach you will have to think about descriptive as well as analytical research there is another point is that is there dogmatic research positivist law they say this is the formula this is the law you will have to observe this one it proceeds on the premise that what we believe is correct and right nothing more than that this is dogma and dogmatic research is also a part of doctrinal research so after discussion over what is doctrinal research its relevance to legal research what are its advantages any study of law you take even you are doing empirical study the first cha chapter relates to doctrinal research it starts with doctrinal research only whoever it may be field research the first one chapter or second chapter will relate to doctrinal research when you are a student of undergraduate studies you are required to write the assignment or research paper automatically it is doctrinal research when you are in post graduate studies in view of the time factor what you would do you will take up only doctrinal research so all these things they revolve around doctrinal research you cannot ignore it and then legal populace when a client comes to you you are concerned with what law is doctrinal one but the demerits are more in the sense that due consideration for economic social or political implications 
are not taken into account in doctoral research. They are ignored. That is how there was a deviation in even your jurisprudence from simply positivist school to very other schools. And then doctoral research is very restrictive in its ambit, confined to the particular field you have chosen, particular field of legal professional. That is why often it takes the form of dogmatic research. My dear friends, times have changed. Stress is on the side of the changing needs of the society. You should estimate the changing needs that is not allowed in doctrinal research. That is why perhaps in the classification, doctrinal research and the next one is empirical research, they say. Can you totally base upon empirical research or not? Let us discuss. What is an empirical research? Empirical research is based upon the data that is collected as a sequel to the, your experience or systematized observation. Once again, empirical research is based on the data collected as a sequel to your experience or your systematized observation. So automatically, you will guess when you are using your senses, you will guess about the conclusion. That is why hypothesis is formed and it may be tested. It may be wrong or right, that is different issue. And then deliberately, you may be involving in yourself in manipulating the variables. So empirical research is based upon the evidence that one sees. One hears, one touches, one, touches, one, one tastes, taste, or one smells. It can be repeated like that. In 1848, you remember August Comte proposed what is known as empiricism or positivism. He said very clearly, whether we agree or not, very clearly he stated that social phenomena or phenomenon, social phenomenon cannot be studied based upon your logic or theological principles or metaphysical theories, but should be studied in the society based upon social relations derived from sensory experiences. As I have told you, what you see, hear, touch, taste, or smell, sensory. So that is valid, other things are not valid, he said. For example, the discrimination of women is directly related to lack of property rights. Can you have doctrinal approach? Never emancipation of women will happen. You study that in society. What you see, what you hear, what you rather gather from others. So, similarly, poverty is directly related to dominant forces in the society. Karl Marx theory. 
scientific method, they say. Kerlinger has specifically stated that scientific research is a systematic, controlled, empirical, and critical investigation. Two points you should remember, my dear friends. They said, societal relations shall be studied in the society itself. Okay. And it should be systematic, controlled, empirical, critical investigation. Okay. Agreed. Keep this one in mind, my dear friends, and answer. Can we say that from this angle onwards, it is a bit deviant from what you have studied in your books. Can we say that only empirical research is, is a legal research and others are not? Because scientific research is building on knowledge and verifiable facts. If you accept what <clears throat> this empiric empiricism says, you will have to exclude many other types of researches, even though they are systematic. The first example, what you can give? Historical research is there. Did you see historical research? That is why there is controversies also about the exact period and all these things. I am not going into the details. Why you call Itihasa and why you could not call other Puranas as Itihasa except Rama, Ramayana and Mahabharata. All these things are not necessary here. We are not discussing historical research. Historical research shall be totally jettisoned if you accept this theory. Biographical research. Suppose anybody says, Sir, what you have done? This bio judicial biography of Justice Koka Subarao, it is no research at all. It is not an empirical study. Can you accept? Thus, pure positivism cannot be accepted. Sometimes logic, which Auguste Comte has stated has no place, works. Human beings are mortal. X is a human being, so he is a mortal. That is logical way of telling, a fundamental thing I told you. But arguments also can be logically made and logically made in the courts. There is another one, my dear friends. Symbolic interactionism. Symbolic interactionism. Human beings' knowledge, rather communication, is based upon symbols and language which they have invented. Is it not? You called this particular one as wall. Who has given that name? Wall. We have given. So, on what we have given, we are making research. We call that this particular one is a symbol of so and so. We have made that symbol. Symbol interactionism is a micro level theory that focuses on the relationship among individuals within the society, communication exchange of meaning around them based upon symbols and language. You give the language and you say that it is perceived. Even for perception, you give your own language. Is it not? So, for example, I tell you one thing. May not be a proper example for symbolic interactionism. 
there were 600 definitions of socialism by the end of 19th century itself not a single one tallying with the other democracy has wonderful rather definitions even china calls it as democracy india calls it as democracy america calls it single definition will it, will it suit all the all these countries when you make a research you say my empirical research i am doing what empirical research you have given the meaning to that which one that is why generally in our thesis one chapter will be conceptual framework you will give the definitions what you believe for the purpose of your thesis phenomenology also is there it is the study of structure of consciousness and experience from first person point of view similarly ethno methodology is there all these things clearly show that the empirical studies alone cannot answer the post empiricist belief that scientific method is not only the method but what i say is that don't use that expression there empiricism may not be the answer but a type of systematic approach is required and that is science and that is scientific method tarka and mimamsa are good examples of it nobody can say that they are not systematic when you say that systematic what you should understand is that science goes with the method not with the matter it is not what is accomplished it is how it is accomplished science is not confined to pure sciences the reason is that why you should be systematic is that science guards you against untested assumptions we are systematic we are objective may not be empiricist so i say that scientific method still holds good even with regard to legal research it may be that we may not reach 100% perfection but we may reach near perfection how it is i will tell you in empiricism itself thomas huxley he is a scientist he said science is a trained and organized common sense it is a trained and organized common sense what we are having is rather law people will have common sense in abundance if it is systematic yes starting from official court up to supreme court even if you take research at llb level or llm level or phd level it is a systematic one science is a trained and organized common sense my dear friends i may take 10 minutes more my dear friends please bear with me because while introducing me she has taken 5 minutes na so i will have to compensate that one another one is that another scientist albert einstein he stated that the whole science is nothing more than refinement of everyday thinking every person will have thinking and it is refinement of everyday thinking they did not mention these scientists did not mention that it is pure science and then good and hat an authority to book on methods of social research he said science is a systematic accumulation of knowledge systematic accumulation of knowledge where is the mention of pure sciences so when you rather analyze these things science is an approach systematic approach where theories are tested and then when they are tested the product is 
theory. Knowledge is always cumulative. What you discuss today and find, and then tomorrow you will find from there, it is like cumulative. You can have replicability and verifiability. Urbanization leads to criminality, not only in India, everywhere in the world, but degree of variation may be there. It may be replicable, it may be verifiable. And then it establishes causal relationship. As I have told you, cause and effect model, that is hypothetical relationship it can establish and it can be proved or disproved. Y is equal to Fx. Poverty leads to criminality. Only one thing which is science requires, we do not have law people and with no exceptions with regard to judges, is that science requires parsimonious effect. Parsimonious effect means explaining as much as possible with fewer propositions. For writing a judgment of Keshavananda Bharati's case, we required 1500 pages. Writing the judgment of other case, we required 1500 pages. Fortunately, now we have everything online, no problem. Otherwise, with regard to paper, it is problem. There is There would be scarcity of paper. We don't believe in parsimonious effect. That is the main problem. So, objectivity, verifiability, replicability, generality, predictability, all these things are achieved through systematic model. But one caution is that, one caution when you are going for empirical study, the caution is that law for that matter, any social science can never be law E is equal to MC square like scientific model. It is not E is equal to MC square. But with the systematic approach, we may reduce errors. Human behavior changes too much from one period to the next per period. I used to have one teacher. When I was in degree, he was not liking me because I was teasing. Fault was mine only. But when I completed and became teacher, I was the pet student for him. Wonderfully, he was affectionate towards me. So human behavior changes too much from one period to another period. When you are studying, what the view they have today may not be there tomorrow. Today, they may in exit poll, they may require one party. Tomorrow, exactly when they wanted to vote, they vote differently. It is too elusive, subtle, and complex. Rigid categorization is always dangerous, my dear friends. And another thing is that you give a question paper, some of you must have been teachers. Answer script we give. You evaluate and the marks are put in a different paper. After six months, if you give the same paper, will you give the same marks unless it is objective? Not possible. As I have told you, human behavior changes. There is a difference between one human being and another human being, but human nature is quality is common. One more problem with regard to studying human beings, the implications which we require is that one human being is rather observed by another human being. The limitations which we have with regard to one human being will also be there in another human being and this uh, human being is studying another human being. When you go for empirical study, I give you an example, which even Professor Ishwarabhat has referred in his book, 
my first research scholar. She did her research on impact of divorce on Hindu women. Then she tried to contact. Her experiences are different. That is different issue altogether. All of a sudden, instead of having empathy, she started having sympathy. What will happen is objectivity is lost. So another point is that I will give you certain things which you cannot even imagine. You may think that everything is all right if it's empirical study. I will show you that how many faults can be there in data deliberately upsetting the results. For example, take social survey. Okay. How much error there is a possibility? First, you go for probability sampling. Excellent. I asked you to take 100 sample from 1,000 specified universe. You take first one. When you are taking next one, it is not from 1,000. You are taking it from 999 because already one is you have deleted. So when you are taking 100 to 1, it is not out of 1,000. How can you say that you have taken from 100 universe? Not only that, you may say replacement. We will replace with another. We will take always 1,000 universe. But when you are taking the first one, the replacement was not there. So random sampling itself is having probability sampling some problem. And systematic, systemic errors will be there. Systemic errors. Administrative errors also will be there. In data processing, we do not know much. Whatever we get, we will mention it. Sample selection error will be there. Interviewer error will be there. Interviewer cheating will be there. For the purpose of completion, we will give our own data. And respondent errors you take. How many? First of all, non-response questionnaire, we won't respond. If you give response, deliberate falsification will be there. Or unconscious misrepresentation will be there. You will give either saying what is socially desirable, even though you do not contribute to that idea, whatever that is desirable socially, you give that idea. Because a senior professor, I should talk in a principled manner. It is not your opinion inside. Auspicious bias. Interviewee bias. Interviewer bias. Extremity bias. So all these things are possible, my dear friends. And that is why it is, I am going to finish within few minutes. Important thing I would like to tell you. Have you read or have you seen at any time? Whenever you write on research methodology, you refer to one particular person. Carl Pearson. There is no shortcut to truth except through the gateway of scientific method that you must have noted. Is it not? Now, in our legal research, my dear friends, nobody has referred to Carl Pearson more than this quotation. But if you see his work, it may be available online also, I do not know. I happen to see during 1892, he has published Carl Persson. It is Grammar of Science. In his Grammar of Science, he has specifically stated about the difference between scientific law and civil law. Wonderful chapter it is, my dear friends. You should form part of our legal research methodology. Civil law involves in a command. Positive law is a command of the sovereign. 
and your duty. Scientific law is only a description. Whereas, when you go to civil law, it is a prescription. Civil law is valid only for special community. A law applicable in India may not be applicable elsewhere. Scientific law is universally applicable. Scientific law is of totally different nature from civil law in the sense that it does not involve an intelligent lawgiver, a command, and a corresponding duty. It is a brief description in mental shorthand of a wide range of possible consequences or sequences and impressions. So that is how he differentiated, but totally he did not say this is not applicable. He also made a distinction between civil law and science law and also natural law. He says the reason behind natural law does not enable us to pass from routine pres prescriptions to anything of the nature of reason behind the world of sense impression. Leaving aside divine origin, how do we ascertain re natural law? We say by virtue of reason. But at that time, my dear friends, mind it. Law and society interaction was not developed that much. If he were to be there, he must have revised and stated certain other things. So those who are having fine, rather having time, <laughs> just to read to Carl Pearson's chapter on distinguishing between law and then scientific law. Another important thing which we ignore is that everybody must have seen in the library at least the jurisprudence book written by Bodenhammer. Edgar Bodenhammer, jurisprudence. He has devoted full chapter for learned scientific method. Why He's, he has drawn what is known as concepts, why law people have evolved this one. Law is to reduce multitude, variety, and diversity of human actions. For example, theft, moving mobile property outside the position of the possessor dishonestly, can you say two activities of theft will be alike? For each one, you cannot have one separate definition. That is why concepts are evolved, ideas are evolved, and we have rather prescribed around that expression, the punishments, trial, and everything. Like that, he has mentioned a wonderful chapter is there in view of the time factor. Already I have exceeded my time. I may not be able to tell my dear friends, even with regard to law, how the definition of several things. For example, the word consultation was substituted with the word concurrence and concurrence was again substituted with recommendations of the collegium. You see the concepts, how they are evolved. Okay, and then with regard to behavioral sciences also, how the judges rather behave, all these things. And one more thing which I am not able to cover now is that jury metrics. 1949, Lee Lovinger article. And then one has to read also computer assisted legal research. Computer assisted legal research, CALR. That also I was not able to rather cover. My dear friends, know the difference between concept and constructs and enjoy reading 
researching at methodology from the lens of legal research. Thank you very much.